Thank you very much, Ron. Thank you all to welcome me today. Uh, my name is Jean-Michel Rodriguez. I'm coming from France, as you can uh, understand with my accent. <laughs> I know that. Uh, I'm a technical director of, uh, for uh, all the European CSIs, so integrators. And uh, we have a, a center, a customer center in Montpellier, south of France, where we can welcome you. I hope some of you already joined us there. Um, I am uh, uh, giving uh, advices, uh, technical advices, helping to uh, build solutions. And we have a team of 180 people there that can help you to, uh, uh, to work <coughs> with you and with your customers. So this is something that uh, we do. Uh, this is the only chart I have, uh, so uh, it's just there for my name and a little joke, uh, which is exactly what Ron was just saying. Uh, I will not talk too much about IBM product because Ron did it already and uh, in a re really, really efficient way, so uh, we will see. Uh, my, my, my speech is always agnostic and I will b go back a bit uh, on uh, some of uh, um, uh, Ron comment. Um, I want to talk about cognitive. Uh, this is the idea. And to see what does it mean and uh, most of our uh, cognitive business. You know what is cognitive already? Because we are all talking about cognitive, right? J just before I, I, I will see that then. You, do you know what does it mean cognitive? Any idea? No, I have a more simple question then. So, uh, the cognitive is human behavior. So that means that is not human simulation; is human behavior. And then we add a word that is very important, which is business. Cognitive business. So, what does it mean? Cognitive business. Easy. Is to make business with cognitive, right? Yeah, sure. <laughs> and. OK, so if we look to this cognitive business, the cognitive business, to make business with cognitive, need tools, sure. And those tools need a uh, kind of food. Uh, and what is the food of the cognitive business, and we talked about that already, is data. So that means that we have data, and we provide data to those cognitive tools in order for them to help us. And those data are structured and unstructured data, wh whatever, we, 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 we don't care too much. Um, where those tools are coming from, so the tools are coming from AI. So this is what is important today, meaning that the artificial intelligence uh, solutions uh, are providing tools to the cognitive in order to do business with them and to use this data. So that's, that's the idea at the end. So when I look to uh, I, artificial intelligence, uh, it, was, it was at least 50 years ago when we start to talk about it. And we were talking about HAL. You remember about HAL? So uh, 2001 Space ODT, HAL was the computer inside doing all, meaning even the coffee. So um, meaning that you can ask questions to HAL, he can give you answer, he can monitor your systems, he can manage your house, he can do all. And that was artificial intelligence 15 years ago. One entity doing all. And then we started to think about that and say, wow. And that was th this winter that we talked about before. It seems to be very difficult to achieve, right? Meaning one entity doing all, like human is doing, is quite difficult to achieve. So we decided to break, split this entity into multiple entities, which are domains. We talk about it already. I will come back to that. So many domains, and we have research in all those domains. So we'll talk about those domains then. There is something else also that we see coming, huge, which is AI. It has been invented just to, uh, don't to, to not scare too much people. AI is augmented intelligence. 
And that is different. Artificial intelligence, we are scared about it. Augmented intelligence, it's OK, sure. So one of the examples of augmented intelligence is GPS. Wow, GPS is very nice, right? Now nobody knows how to read a card, a map, sorry. So you have a map, you don't know how to read it, but you have the GPS. If the GPS doesn't work, no way. So anytime you are renting a car, you are asking about this no lost, never lost system. If not, no way. So that's, that's nice. But when we are talking about augmented intelligence, we are also wo thinking about chip in your brain to add memory or exoskeleton, or all the things that will help human to be augmented. Is it artificial intelligence? Not too much, but it's part of it. I will talk about it. Then we have new technology that are coming with uh, AI. Uh, and I, uh, I won't talk about power AI, about NVIDIA, GPU. There is many new technology coming, but there is two ways to see it. Sometimes we can do AI because we have this new technology. And sometimes it's because AI that we have this new technology. So I will, I, I will look at it just, just after. Let's start with, with domains. So domains are all the set of artificial intelligence or subset arti of artificial intelligence we can uh, define today. The first one is Turing. So the Turing test, or you, you know about the Turing test, meaning it's just simulating. It's a huge branch of artificial intelligence today. There is no intelligence at all. But it's part of it. And we find here all the boat, all the chatbot, meaning all the objects that is are simulating what human is doing. You think you think you are talking to a human, but you are talking to a machine. And there is a, a specific test, the Turing test, uh, uh, that exists since now 50 or 60 years, which is in fact you have a keyboard and you try to talk or interact with something, and you have to determine if this thing is a human or not. And today, 60 years after, we never succeed. The best case we had was one, uh, one year and a half in Japan. Uh, there is a chatbot that uh, uh, spoke with a human during 25 minutes before the human was able to determine that he was not a human. 25 minutes is huge. That means that this kind of thing in front of you, you will never think that it's not a human, even more if it's a support, help desk, or whatever you think about. Uh, most of the time, you can, you can know that it's not a human when you are asking a complex question. Easy. You ask a complex question, if it's answered quickly, normally it's not a human. If you ask the machine to, to multiply a huge number, a huge number, it cannot answer in one second. A machine can do, a human not. Uh, but there is no intelligence here. Then you have something called vision. We talk about this now, some, 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 some minutes ago. The vision is two parts of artificial intelligence. The first one is the physical. Easy, we did it, now it's done. Physical is replacing human eyes. I want to see. The human eye is one of the worst eye in the in the mammifer or the mammal uh, world, meaning that the 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 eyes from the chameleon is much more efficient, right? You can see behind, you can see on top. You can imagine if we can do that, you can have one eyes here and the other one there. Uh, the the eyes of the bee is much more efficient than the one from human. So you can have now eyes. Uh, I mean known artificial eyes that are much more efficient than just the human one. You can see uh, X waves, you can see UV and whatever. But with the vision is coming something else called vision recognition. 
And that's something very interesting. So we talk about all those tags with all those pictures, but there is something called object recognition going into the, the <coughs> new technology recognition. Sorry, yeah. So object recognition is really, really complex. Uh, we don't think about it, but let's say if I have a bottle of water, whatever bottle of water I can have, immediately in this room, all the people will think that is a bottle of water, right? If uh, you have a new one coming, you never saw it, but you can recognize it. Sure. You can say, oh, this one is a bottle. Yeah, sure. Now, if I trash my bottle and if I put it in the, in the trash, in the garbage, even trashed, you will say, oh, this is a bottle of water. Sure. What about a machine? No way. If the bottle is trashed in the garbage, they will not recognize it unless you train them to recognize, which is something else. So object recognition is really something very important. And moreover, when we think about the other domain, which is autonomous and scheduling. So autonomous and scheduling is what we, uh, we, we talked about again before, which is uh, driverless uh, in, in cars and all those things. And with this uh, new domain, we got some ethical problems. And uh, it was not there before, meaning that, OK, the car is driving alone. There is no drivers inside. And there is uh, uh, somebody crossing the road in front of the car. And the car has to select the wall here and to kill the passenger or to kill directly the human or the pedestrian. What the algorithm, because at the end it's an algorithm, what the algorithm will decide? Any idea? OK. <laughs> Mercedes has already decided they will kill. Pedestrian. Yeah, they will kill the pedestrian. And why? Exactly, <laughs> because uh, it's exactly that. It's because inside the car, they have a client. <laughs> Done. That's OK. That's OK. You have just to decide, and then it's clear. OK, now there is two pedestrians, a young guy and an old one. Which one? <laughs> Why? That's the problem, the old one. Because the old one is the president of, let's say, not France, Italy. And <laughs> the young one is somebody that just told a motorcycle is a bad guy. <laughs> but anyway, you're right. Let's say we will kill the, we'll kill the old one. So that done. <laughs> Even if I'm not agree with that, but not too, <laughs> not too happy about it. But, <laughs> but what, uh, what about the two same people, the two same, a black and a white one? So you see that we have some ethical problem I think at the end, it will be solved. Nobody will be allowed to cross the road. So you will have to take the bridge, like animals are doing today, meaning we are, we are today building specific tunnels for froggers in order to cross the highway. So we'll do the same for humans. So that's, uh, that's OK. Yeah, we have to think about all, 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 all of that. So we will, we will progress. What is, do you think that today, we can let autonomous cars in the street. No. Why? Because we have humans driving. <laughs> so that's the main problem. If you have just autonomous car in the, in the street, there is no problem. Let's imagine four cars, 200 kilometers per hour driving and coming to a crossing road. The all are communicating. One is saying, oh, I have somebody inside the, the car that is very ill. I, I have to go to the hospital. Could you please let me go? What the other one will do? They will stop. Now you have four Italian drivers <laughs> coming at 200 <laughs> kilometers per hour and going into the crossing road. What they will do? 
I want to win. Yeah, but that's the problem. Meaning, and that will be the problem. <laughs> we have problem because we have human driving. The other domain here is robot. So robot, it's okay. I would say we know that you know certainly that in the automotive industry, for one thousand uh, human, you have one thousand and six hundred robots. So nothing new there. We have robots everywhere, and they are working quite well. Uh, what is what is the main problem with robots? Sorry, it's not a problem. Meaning, they, yeah, they, d they don't have any conscious, and all. but they have a problem today, which is the, the 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 autonomy, the battery. If you look, if you look on the web to the to the robot that are doing the the most, meaning jumping and so on, what you see, you see a huge cable coming out, and you don't see the truck that is running in the same way, just to to pu to, to to power these kind of things. So we have an energy problem today with robots. We need to find a way to uh, power them. Yeah, it could be nuclear, which is quite good. And then they, they will not have any, any, any problem with this. Uh, this is the case for Voyager 1, the, 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 this, this uh, small satellite that went out from the solar system recently. He has a, 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 a nuclear battery inside. This is the way that we will welcome aliens when we'll join the, 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 the planet, for sure. Uh, so yeah, we are, you are you, we are looking to that. Uh, there is some research. Uh, that's also something interesting when we think about, uh, I don't know if I, because there is, there is uh, the camera, but the, 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 <laughs> the dark side of the artificial intelligence, I would say. Uh, we have now batteries that are uh, um, bio biological batteries. So you have bacteria inside, and you just have to feed the bacteria in order for the battery to be charged. And uh, uh, so that means that you have some robots running, a very small one, it's a, it's a Medusa, but anyway, it's starting, that have those kind of batteries, and the only thing that you have to do is to feed them. In the next future, they will be able to find them their food themselves, like us. But by now, we are feeding them. And we are looking to what is the best food for those systems. And uh, uh, so nitratus and azote is very good. So they were, uh, I don't know the name, but with fruit, they were feeding them with fruit and uh, old food. That's very good for them to be to be feeding, and uh, now they tried something else. And do you know what is the best food for those batteries? It's uh, human uh, uh, urina. <laughs> <laughs> so let's think about that. Meaning, if human urina is good to feed the robot, perhaps tomorrow the robot. When we will be intelligent enough, we'll have human farms asking us to do that and just for feed <laughs> to feed the to, to, to feed the, 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 the robots. I'm I'm joking a bit, but this is something that we should think about. But I will talk about that then. Let's say. Um, then we have uh, one domain called knowledge. So we know that, and we talk about it: system expert systems, knowledge based, what, what ontology. Uh, all the metadata, data, all the things you know already. So those is, is this is one of the domain uh, of the artificial intelligence, quite known. Uh, we're coming now with this idea of small data, very, very interesting idea. Um, then we have uh, natural language. So natural language is uh, very interesting for the chatbot. Yeah. But it's also very interesting for the semantic analysis, as we talked about before. Semantic network, meaning this is a new way to structure unstructured data. So instead to take the unstructured data and put those into tables, select all from tables, we put that into the network, semantic network, and then we have nodes, and it's much more easy then 
to get the information there. Uh, natural language is a, a complex domain, uh, specifically when you have uh, an, uh, ambiguous grammar. So the less ambiguous is English. So it's why uh, we started <coughs> with this and we have translators that are working quite well with, with uh, English. As soon as you have a non-deterministic language or ambiguous grammar, it's starting to be very complex. What is the more complex grammar in the world? Sorry? No. <laughs> no? Spanish. Spanish is the more, because it's really, really ambiguous. <coughs> French, French is ambiguous too. Let's say, if I say it, ju ju just for you, if, I, if I'm saying, Joan, well, I'm taking English name, Joan says to Paul <coughs> that he has an headache. Joan says to Paul that <coughs> he has an headache. Easy. How many characters? Can you imagine? You are, you, are, oh, you are just thinking about it. So, how, ma how many characters there? John says to Paul that he has a headache. Sorry? Nine. Nine? Nine words. No, characters, in, uh, persons. Sorry. Oh. Oh. Well. Two? No, three. John says to Paul that he has a headache. Now, now, <laughs> yeah, but now, who has an headache? John, Paul, or this one? We don't know. So now, what's on health? Or oh, another one. He has to treat <coughs> the headache. What kind of medicine he will give? Let's say that this one is fully allergic to aspirin. And if the this uh, solution is giving aspirin to them, to him, what will happen? So don't joke, just read the news, you will see. Mm. <laughs> uh, and it's, it's just, just two weeks ago. Uh, so the, 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 the other one is machine learning. So machine learning is, uh, is, not, only, is not only neural network. Is neural network, sure, but is also deep learning. What is deep learning? It's just neural network where you have more infrastructure, right? Why we can do deep learning today is because we have computers that are more powerful than the one that we had yesterday. So yesterday was neural network and today is deep learning, but it's the same. Pretty. You go, you, you go deeply into network. Uh, but machine learning is also genetic algorithm. So all those algorithms that can modify itself without any human interaction. So at, uh, at the end, the algorithm is doing something which was not planned to be done by you. Uh, they, they, they ask, they ask uh, uh, this kind of genetic algorithm to think about a, visual, a visualization solution. It was last year. And the algorithm came with a, a solution, an algorithm that was better than any one developed by a human. And even more, human was not able to understand what was written here. So you see that genetic algorithm is, going is, 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 is a huge way to do. There is also a decision tree, a Bayesian network. So there is many, many uh, solutions around machine learning, not, not just deep learning. And then the last one is decision. So uh, all the algorithm and solution that help you to take the decision. And why we need that? So I was, I was talking about cognitive. So cognitive, the first principle of cognitive is, is not using all the tools. Cognitive is just using knowledge, natural language, machine learning, and decision. So this is the cognitive uh, itself. And when you think about the cognitive, you have to think about a uh, cognitive cycle, uh, which is exactly what a human is doing. A human is 
observing, then is interpreting, then is evaluating, and then is deciding. If you don't let the machine decide, there is no risk. This is what we can say. So observing. Observing is, and this cognitive cycle is, is true for all meaning, observing is I want to understand the environment, whatever environment you are thinking about. So if we are talking about visualization, I want to understand what is happening in the room. If I'm talking about data center, I want to know about the cooling, about uh, the servers, the storage, whatever you think about. If you're talking about natural language, I want to know about the context, which is one of the sub-domain of the natural language, very complex domain, uh, in order to understand on, on what I'm talking about. If I see a horse in the TV, I'm talking about a circus, sport, meat, I don't know. It's why it's so difficult for strangers to understand TV or even radio, because it's difficult to get the context. As soon as you have the context, it's much more easy. So the observation is that I'm gathering data, gathering data. Then you have the interpretation of this data, structured, unstructured, to do what? And to clean it if needed, all the things that we are doing naturally when we are human, but a machine has to do it. So gathering this data, structuring, and then from this data, she has to evaluate something. The evaluation is coming with a percentage. 73, 74, whatever you think about, <coughs> is coming from the evolution. And then the evolution is given to the human or given to another machine, saying, OK, there is 75% of chance of rain. So I'm going into all those uh, information, humidity, I'm going ab about the, 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 the wind, uh, information from the weather company, information, whatever you can think about, structure it, OK, what does it mean? And at the end, evaluation, there is 75% of chance of rain. And I'm giving this information to the human. And the human has to decide, do I have to take my umbrella? Yes or no. <coughs> Easy. That's the full process, but the decision is for the human. Then you can have something more. Same process. But now I'm saying to the human, take your umbrella. That's my advice. Take it. It's OK. So the human can say, I don't want to hear you. So Alexa, do I have to take my umbrella? Yes, please take your umbrella. So if you don't want to hear or listen, Andrea, uh, Alexa, it's OK, meaning no problem about it. What the decision is uh, made for is just to know if I want to take my umbrella because I don't want to be wet. So what about if now the machine is saying, you have to take your umbrella? So now it's a little different because we let the machine decide for us. The machine is saying, take your umbrella. What does it mean? Do you want to do it? You have to. So if you say, if you say no, no, I will not. There is no problem about it. When you will go out, <coughs> you will be wet, then ill, and then the social security will say, I will not reimburse you for your medical uh, 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 problem because I, I said <coughs> to you, take your umbrella, you didn't take it. So this is where we're going with all this data if we let the, the, the decision to the machine at the end, for sure. And we have, when we look to those amount of data coming from all the things, so from, from the car, for example, from the car you have so many data, and I, IBM is working today to reuse the data, so the data uh, coming from Peugeot car, 
uh, we are using, reusing the data and we are giving or selling this data to Meteo France, our weather system. So what does it mean? It means that Meteo France can get all the data from all the cars. So they know if it's raining or not, they know about the wind, they know about the temperature, so they can build the more efficient weather system without any probes, any sensor, any human. So this is where we're going to, I mean, reusing this data. So pay attention to that. The decision is made on a huge amount of data. And then even if we have uh, to decide, uh, that can imply something else. For, 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 other, for other systems, so think about it. So this is uh, the cognitive systems, and the cognitive system is now uh, coming out with two new things. If we want to uh, think like human, we need to look at our brain, and this is what we call neurosciences. If we want to think as human, we need to have something else that is coming quite huge. Uh, it's a, we, don't, we don't need precision all the time. I don't care about a temperature outside of 23.556789. Doesn't, doesn't mean nothing for me. I need, in the, in the best case, that uh, the, the system give me the, the temperature like this, 20, 23, 24, 25, whatever, or to say it's cold outside, but I don't care about the precise temperature. And this is most of the time the case. I think that this is my friend here. I don't want to be sure. It's, it's okay to, to think that it's him, and then I can go there and to, and to look at it. So this is called in our world, approximate IT. Approximate IT is a way to give approximation and not always precision. Very important because this approximate IT, which is something that we are already doing, doing in HPC, high performance, uh, high performance computing, the appro approximate IT will, uh, will save uh, will we'll save resources because you don't have to go through the end of the algorithm. You will stop before and you will be able to give a result more quickly than previously. So you're saving resources and time. The only thing is you cannot do that on, uh, on critical data. No way. Critical data is something or critical systems. But for the other one, no problem about it. Neurosciences, so approximate IT is coming here in this scope here with approximate computing. It's just, uh, it's just a way, uh, as I said, to enhance the way we, 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 are, we, are, we are computing stuff. And uh, it's a software. So that means that it's just programmation, there is no hardware there. For neurosciences, uh, how to simulate the human brains, uh, the, the best way to simulate a, neuro, a, neuro, uh, a brain is to simulate what is inside the brain. At least what we know. So I'm really saying simulation because we don't know how this thing is working. So simulating, we have something called within IBM Synapse, which is a chip, a, s uh, <laughs> a small chip with uh, neurons inside and synapse. So the synapse is the way this chip can communicate with the other one. So in those synapse chips, we have about 1 million neurons and per neuron, 256 synapses. Mm. So one, uh, 1 million neurons, two, uh, 250, 256 synapses in this chip. In our brain, we have 10 billion neurons and 10 to 100,000 synapses per neuron. You see the difference. 
Uh, to make that working, we need megawatt of energy. To make our brain working, we need uh, one, one piece of sugar. <laughs> so we see also the difference. Um, so that, that, that's important because, because then that, that doesn't mean that those machines will not be uh, more intelligent than us. They will be. When? We don't know. Could be tomorrow or could be in one year or ten years. But they will be more, more intelligent, that's sure. But we have the conscience that they don't have. So we will see what, I what is important. Yeah. yeah. Sorry? Always. I started at uh, 35. So I think that I can, I will say five minutes. So, so I need, uh, yeah, okay, two minutes will be okay. Let's, mm -hmm. three minutes. <laughs> 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 okay. Uh, so an another, another systems or another things we have, so you, you understand that this is uh, all the domain for artificial intelligence and then you look to how to uh, process this, uh, these uh, tools and how this process this intelligence. So this is what we call uh, yeah, hybrid IT. That means that you have uh, multi multiple platforms in order to do so. So I talk about approximate computing for the, uh, for the approximate IT, synapse for the neurosciences. Uh, something that will be very important in the next future is performance. Uh, uh, meaning that we need to have more efficient and more performing uh, computers. Uh, and uh, to do so, we just invent the new world, uh, quantum. So quantum will help us to, uh, uh, to multiply our performance by 100,000 to 1 million. So we will not, we will not solve new problems. No way. We'll just do the computation in a more faster way. So, so th that will help to do things anyway. So that's, that's very important. And what we want also to do when we talk about this uh, uh, artificial intelligence, robotics, vision, and all those things is to kind to have miniaturization of hardware. So we have today something called Node, uh, uh, sorry, Dome. And uh, this technology is uh, uh, a technology that helps you to reduce dramatically the number of servers uh, in, uh, in uh, your data center. For example, for uh, one new rack, one new is a very thing, you can put 128 servers. So that means that you can reduce the impact of, of the data server, uh, of the data center in order, in order to, to compute uh, those things. So uh, I think. Uh, I don't have enough. I don't have more to add to that. Uh, any, unless you have questions or comments. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. So I, I can I can repeat the question. Yeah. I can repeat the question anyway. Oh yeah, that's also fine. Yeah. yeah. So the, the the question the question is we miss. Uh, uh, let me let me re re summarize a bit. We we miss the diagnosis, meaning when we, when we have a, when we have a, a machine saying okay this is my advice, uh, we uh, miss the diagnosis. So not all the time. With neural network and deep learning. Yes, because it's a black box, so you know how to train the box, you know when the result is okay, but you never know how it came to that. So if I want to, if I want to recognize a, a water of bottle, I don't care. Meaning that I don't have the diagnosis, it's saying this is a, a, a bottle of water and I can trust it and done. But you're right, for some domains like uh, the medicine, health, or like uh, the law, it's mandatory to know. And so you have, it's why I was talking about new uh, 
uh, new things than just a uh, neural network, you need to add a way to give a diagnostic to people. If, I, if, the, if the, the system is saying to me that I have a cancer, I want to know how it came to that. Just because if I don't want to trust it, I need to have some information for that. Yeah, you're fully right. So for, for when you want to, to train a machine and if you don't need diagnosis, the, the neural network and deep learning and the, all the supervised mode and unsupervised mode are very good. As soon as you need a diagnosis, you need to join another way to compute, another way to do artificial intelligence. So this is exactly what we're doing with Watson, for example. In Watson, we have multiple tools inside, not just the, the neural network. You have the neural network, you have the machine learning, you have the genetic algorithm, you, we have bias entry, we have bi oh, network, we have decision tree inside, just to be sure that when needed, we will be able to provide a diagnosis. Yeah. Uh, if you take if you take the Watson API for Watson Health is is providing you with the diagnosis exactly what is happening, and it helped us uh, to understand why uh, we did a mistake some some weeks ago, because we got we got the diagnosis and we saw inside that the mistake was there, we know why, so th yeah yeah we have it we we Watson Health we have it yeah. Okay, any, any anything. So I'm here anyway. So thank you very much for your time. Have a nice uh, afternoon and a uh, nice event. Oh.